Hey everybody, it's Travis speaking, and on this beautiful sunny winter day in Toronto, I figured I'd share a little bit of inventor tips and tricks. Uh, what I got open here is an assembly file, and as you can see in the model browser, I've got a few parts in here. Uh, you'll notice that the first part I placed is grounded by the little pin icon on the part, and then I have a pinion shaft, a ram, and a faceplate. Now this is just a small portion of this project. There are other parts, but what I wanted to show you today was a way that you can um, essentially make life easier when trying to get these components to line up because what we're going to want is these teeth on the pinion shaft and the ram to line up appropriately. So what I'm going to do is just get started with constraining some of these and get them where we need them to be. So I'm going to constrain the pinion shaft with a quick mate constraint on this shared axis and I'll say OK to that and I'm just going to move that over a little bit so that our teeth on the pinion shaft are actually in the right area so that looks pretty good and I'll just use the view cube to get back into a nice position what I'm going to want to do is use one of these faces and align it to one of these inside faces on the press frame so to do that, I'm just going to select this one side face and use the view cube again. And I'm going to select this face here. Now, that's not exactly the position I wanted in, but that's OK. What we've done is we've eliminated one degree of freedom to make things a little bit simpler. So you'll notice that I can still drag this around, and it doesn't really look like it's been constrained. But if we go into an orthographic perspective with our view cube, you'll notice that I can't move this to the left or right. That's due to the degree of freedom that we removed. If you want a little helpful tool to help you uh, see where your de degrees of freedom have gone, you can come into the View tab and click on Degrees of Freedom. Now you'll see these arrows pointing and showing you you can count how many green arrows and that's essentially how many degrees of freedom you have left to eliminate. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this face here because I want the teeth to face the teeth of our pinion shot and I'm going to constrain that to this face here. So I'll click on this face, I'll click on this face and that's great we've applied that constraint. So now you can see that I've got one more degree of freedom moving up and down but we don't have these aren't constrained together so what I want to happen is when I rotate this pinion shaft I want this ram to move up and down vice versa so to do that I'm going to use another constraint called a rotate translational and that you can find in the motion tab of the constraints dialog box so I'm going to click on the rotation translation and I'm going to click on this axis and then I'm going to click on this edge. I'll hit OK. And now if I grab this, I should see that RAM move up and down. So that's pretty slick. Now there's one problem here. If I go in to really examine where these teeth are lining up, they might not line up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly grab the frame itself and I'm going to uncheck the enable so I can see what's happening here. Another way of doing this is to change our representation. Right? So right now I can't do anything with this frame because it's not enabled. And that's okay, that's really all I needed to see what's happening here. Now I can see the interference, but if it's really minute, what you might want to do is come back over to inspect, apply the contact solver, and use this analyze interference tool. So right now it doesn't look like there's much but I'm going to force some interference here. Then I'll click on the analyze interference. I'll select one part. Let's see did I get it? And then I'll select my second part and then we'll hit OK. And now you can see with these red uh, regions here that it's saying that yeah you do have some interference between parts. So I'll say OK and what I'll do is I'll just rotate this teeth, the teeth on this one a little bit but when I do that the RAM moves so what can I do I can simply come over here 
come down to that rotation translation constraint and suppress it. Now my pinion shaft will move independent of the ram. So I line that up and that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm going to have any interference anymore. So we'll try this one more time. I'll select my part over here. Looks like maybe I already selected it before I opened it up. So it's still saying, yeah, you still got some interference here, but this looks like to me it might be from the other direction. So I'm just going to examine this a little bit further using the view cube. And when I look here, I'm seeing that I'm not where I want to be with this. So I'll just move that over just a little bit and I'll come back to that orthographic view and see if I didn't cause any more interference here. So that looks about right. Now we'll try this again. And I think I already had that, so we'll say OK. And it's saying that there's no interference detected. That's excellent. So now I can unsuppress this constraint. And I can come back to my Arbor Press frame. And we can turn that back on so we can see it. And now we know that when we turn this pinion shaft and this goes up and down this ram it's going to be okay but I have to constrain obviously some more things here you can see that there's uh, other degrees of freedom for the pinion shaft that have to be removed the one other thing I wanted to talk about today was if we didn't want to disable the actual frame what we can do is come up to rep representations expand this and then when we right click on the view default we can say new and now we're in a new view what I want to do is just change how this appears in this new view so now any changes that we make are going to be saved in this view so what I'm going to do is bring it back to a nice ISO I'll zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to select my my frame and I'm just going to change its appearance to the clear blue Let's see if I can find that quick clear blue and now when I go back to that view I can see through it and it's nice you might want to go over to your view tab and choose uh, shaded with edges that'll give you a little bit more definition and as you can see here when I moved that around I was kind of kind of messed up what I was actually trying to do so this would be a good way of, of changing this now so now that I've got everything set up the way I want, I've got the view set up, what I'm going to do is come back to the new view, right click it, and say lock. So you'll notice now if I click back to the master, it changes my appearance on the frame, and it goes back to the way I actually want it. When I want to work on this constraint, I can double click on view 1, and it brings it back to that nice clear blue. So that's a, a great way of taking a look at really fine precision constraints. There was one other thing. Right now I'm working on a, a blue, clear blue object with a blue background. So this is something that most of you probably already know. But if I do want to change that to get a little more contrast, I'm going to come over to Tools. I'm going to go into Application Options. And under Colors, I can change how my background looks. So that's a pretty basic tip, but it could help you if you want to just switch things over quickly. So now I can see that with a little more contrast. Anyway, that's it for today's tips. If you have any feedback, please comment and uh, hit the subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye now.